So today we are going to see regarding the class amphibia. and reptalia. So if you remember about the amphibia, then you can remember about frogs, toads, Sicilians, monitor lizards. So all those things will come under amphibia. Sorry, monitor lizard will come under reptalia. Frogs, toads, and salamanders, Sicilians, these things will come under amphibia. Under reptalia, you will be getting lizards, snakes, tortoise, turtle. These things will come under reptalia. Amphibia means having dual life. Reptalia means which is crawler as well as creeping. So first thing is coming to amphibia. These got originated during Devonian period. And at the same time, Carboniferous period, we call it as the period of amphibians. Okay. Carboniferous period is the period of amphibians. And including vertebrates, these will be having dual life. In, it can live in water. At the same time, it can live in land. And water is very essential thing also. And there are no marine forms. In amphibians, you cannot see any marine forms. No amphibians is found in sea or ocean. That is very uh, noted thing under amphibians. Okay, so we are, these are the first chordates which can live on land but not permanently. Then dependent on water for their reproduction. Yes, if you see for example, we'll go with frogs. Frogs is, the fertilization of frogs is external which happens in water and the eggs are an amniote. Means there is no amniotic membrane. So the frogs will lay eggs and sperms in water. The fertilization will happen in water. And the formation of eggs, larva, everything will happen in its water. So water is very essential for its reproduction. The same thing you can see in bryophyta and pteridophyta as well. Okay. And next thing is their egg do not have any protective covering. So that's why they'll evaporate. That's why they lay in water. So the eggs we call it as an amniotic eggs. And the body is divided mainly into head, trunk, and tail. And some amphibians will not have tail. Those amphibians, we call it as anura. Euroman tail. So anura, example, uh, you will be having frogs, toads, so, um, but you can see tail in their larval stage. So, the larval stage of frog, we call it as tadpole larva. And tadpole larva will be very similar to fishes because uh, the tadpole larva and the fishes will have the lateral line system. That's how it is very, very similar thing. And uh, the skin is very smooth and scaleless. You can't find any scales for amphibians, but you can find scales for fishes as well as reptiles. Fishes will be having placoid, cycloid, tenoid. But when you go with reptiles, you will be having hard scales, cornified scales. But in amphibians, you can't see any scales. But there are certain few exceptions where you can find embedded. The scales are present. They are embedded in the skin. So the best example for this is ichthyophis. So the ichthyophis will be having dermal scales. Ichthyo means fish. So it looks like fish. That's why they named it as ichthyo fish having scales. So the body has scales. That's why they named it as ichthyo fish. And skin is glandular, which always keeps the skin moist. So these members can respire through skin also. So this can respire through skin, lungs, 
and buccopharyngeal. Okay, right. So these are the organs of respiration. And mostly these undergo cutaneous respiration. Because of that, the skin is uh, covered by mucus and uh, so because to maintain that cutaneous respiration and in buffo, so which is uh, another type of frog, the frogs and in buffo uh, is, for example, buffo we call it as toad. So in a toad, we have poisonous gland on the skin and for some animals, you can see this poisonous glands. And you have the pigment uh, cells also. So we call it as chromatophore because frogs, you can find various colors actually because of this chromatophores. And a few amphibians will have the ability to change the color also for, by contracting the pigment cells. So and this phenomenon, we call it as metacrosis. Meta means change, it can change the skin color. This camouflage will be there. We have two pairs of limbs, helps in water as well as moving on the land. And the four limbs have five fing uh, four fingers, and but the hind limb will be having only five fingers. So four limbs are with four fingers. So four, four. And hind limbs, five fingers. And the digits do not have any nails or claws. But nails and claws you can able to see in reptiles. There will be no nails and claws. And the mouth is bigger in size. Upper side and both uh, lower jaws will be having similar teeth. So that's why uh, you'll be, example is acrodont. You'll be having similar teeth. So acrodont. And the teeth are a pleurodont, homodont, as well as polydont. Polydont means many sets of teeth during their lifetime. Homodont means similar type of teeth. The teeth are embedded uh, very near to the lip region. That's why it is pleurodont and acrodont. So these are the, but our teeth is thecodont, human beings teeth is thecodont, heterodont, diphyodont. And you can see the suspensory is uh, of the jaws are autostylic. Autostylic in the sense only the lower jaw will be moving. In autostylic only the lower jaws will move. And uh, you will be having a common thing called cloaca. Cloaca in the sense elementary canal, urinary blood, urinary tract and uh, genital ducts all will open into a single chamber that is cloaca. Cloaca is present here. You can find cloaca in reptiles as well. And uh, we already have seen respiration will happen by gills. In tadpole larva, the gills will be present and skin, lungs and buccopharyngeal cavity. And we have two nostrils is found in this condition, which is Dirhinus. Dirhinus means two nostrils will be there. In cyclostomes, you have only one nostril, which is monorhinus. But in fishes and amphibians, you have two nostrils, which is mono dirhinus condition. Heart is actually three chambered. So in this three chambered heart, you will be having two auricles and one ventricle. And this type of heart, we call it as atriovenous heart, atriovenous heart. heart. And you will be having, the heart will be pumping mixed blood. But the fishes heart, we call it as venous heart because that will be pumping the impure blood or deoxygenated blood. And RBC is biconvex. oval and nucleated. 
and in this you can find the renal portal system as well as hepatic portal system both the things are there renal and uh, hepatic portal system endoskeleton is made up of bones but cranium is cartilaginous okay that to be noted and those skeleton is bones but uh, cranium is cartilaginous and uh, the skull is two condyles dicondylic skull so in fishes you will be seeing monocondylic skull in amphibians it is dicondylic skull the ribs are absent but may be present in some animals but ribs are fused to form sternum vertebra we call it as procellus procellus in the sense uh, we have uh, both the side anterior as well as posterior side, sorry anteriorly it is concave The vertebra anteriorly it is concave, uh, posteriorly it is flat. This is procellus condition, and amphicellus both the sides you will be having concave vertebra anterior and posterior, and this amphicellus will be seen in fishes. Procellus is seen in uh, amphibians. So anteriorly it is concave, and here it is like so not flat. It is convex. Excuse me for this. so this anteriorly it is concave but posteriorly it is convex this is procellus amphicellus means both the side it is concave which is seen in fishes external ears are absent but only one ear ossicle is present in middle ear we call it as columella cranial nerves are 10 pairs and lateral line system is present in larva which is tadpole larva you can find the lateral line system kidneys are mesonephric and you can have the mesonephric kidney even fishes also mesonephric kidney and the animals are ureotelic ureotelic in the sense they'll excrete urea but the tadpole larva will excrete ammonia its salamanders and larvas are ammonotelic and uh, you can see uh, these are all are cold blooded which is poikilothermic poikilothermic and that will undergo hibernation hibernation in the sense it is winter sleep winter sleep is hibernation and aestivation is summer sleep and aestivation also will be seen on extreme hot and cold condition aestivation is seen in extreme hot in extreme cold it will undergo uh, hibernation okay and the next thing is so the uni these are unisexual unisexual or we otherwise call it as dioecious males will be lacking uh, no copulatory organs will be there and the animals return to water from land return to water from land only for reproduction the fertilization is external which happens in water and these are oviparous these will lay eggs so they lay eggs in water we already know and the eggs are mesolestial 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 means having medium sized yolk and extra embryonic membranes amnion chorion now these things are absent actually so they are placed under the group called an amniota cleavage of x is holoplastic and unequal
and the development is indirect the larva seen here is tadpole larva and uh, let's see some of the examples buffo which is toad uh, here only you can see some of the poisonous glands will be present on the skin rana which is frog hyla tree frog and salamandra salamander and next is ichthyophis ichthyophis which is limbless amphibian and you can see this uh, buffo and rana hyla these will comes under anura means absence of tail salamandra ichthyophis will comes under urodella which is uh, tailed amphibians so we'll see some of the uh, very famous amphibians so now we'll see the list which is hyla we already know it is tree frog rana tigrina indian bullfrog and racophorus which is flying frog should i always call it as flying frog elites which is midwife toad uh, because uh, in elites uh, you can see the parental care is very much marked and well developed parental care will be there elites and uh, male toads will carry the eggs on their limbs that's how they are very famous elites and pipa americana so in pipa americana you will be having we otherwise call it as suriname toad uh, which is actually carries x and uh, secondary viviparity will be there in pipa americana tongue is absent actually in this case and next it is rana goliath which is the largest frog african bull frog and next it is phyllobates the smallest frog you can find it in cuba phyllobates is the smallest frog and discoglossus or bombinator you otherwise call it as bombinator which is fire belly toad and xenopus african toad okay so these are about uh, the characteristic features of amphibians and so far the best examples we'll go with the next class class reptilia which is crawling as well as creeping of animals and uh, these are very much originated during carboniferous period and in the era, period of paleozoic era and uh, mesozoic is considered as the golden era of reptiles even for 
uh, dinosaurs also the golden era will be mesozoic and the study of reptiles we call it as herpetology study of uh, reptiles is uh, herpetology and study of uh, snakes is ophiology or we otherwise call it as serpentology study of lizards is saurology and these are the first successful uh, terrestrial animals you can see in the plants also the first successful land plants is uh, nothing but pteridophytes and the reptiles are the otherwise first reptiles we call it as stem reptiles or cotylosaurus and these are cold blooded poikilothermic we have cold blooded only two classes are warm blooded one is apes and other one is mammals only those two classes are warm blooded warm blooded cyclostomes fishes amphibians reptiles or cold blooded because their temperature they cannot uh, maintain their temperature and next thing is mostly these are terrestrial but some are aquatic but uh, some some are aquatic and you can see the body is divided into head neck trunk and tail but you cannot see neck uh, for the part of uh, amphibians head trunk and tail here head neck trunk and tail skin is dry cornified uh, and rough so and uh, uh, and non glandular so these are not soft those uh, lizards are very hard and snakes are very hard because they consist of dry cornified rough non glandular skin and the limbs are pentadactyl because you can see for frogs four limbs having four fingers hind limbs have five fingers but here four limbs and hind limbs will be having uh, five fingers which is pentadactyl and uh, each digit have claws as well you don't find claws for amphibians and some lizards and snakes do not have uh, limbs so ophiosaurus ophiosaurus is limbless lizard don't get confused limbless amphibian is ichthyophis and ophiosaurus is limbless uh, lizard and exoskeleton consists of bony scales bony plates and these are epidermal scales but fishes you will be having uh, scales from dermis complete elementary canal will be there and cloaca will be there cloaca the common chamber for elementary canal urinary bladder and reproductive system and the teeth are thecodont which is our teeth which is the tooth is embedded in the socket you have thecodont acrodont so the teeth are embedded in the tissues and pleurodont all the three types of teeth are there acrodont thecodont and pleurodont and tongue is protrusible you can see for snakes and respiration will happen by lungs it has lungs but for snakes the left lung is poorly developed but members of uh, chilonia which is uh, turtle the respiration will happen through cloaca it is known as cloacal respiration for turtles the respiration is through cloaca 
cloaca, so it is known as cloacal respiration will take place. Heart is incomplete, uh, incompletely four chambered. You will be having uh, two complete auricles and two incomplete ventricles. Ventricles two will be there, but two incompletely separated. Two incomplete ventricles. And right and left, uh, both systemic arches are present, but but exception will be crocodilia. Crocodilia, it is completely divided into four chambered. You can see the four chambered heart, complete four chambered heart will be there for crocodilia, four chambered. And external ear aperture is absent. Tympanum is present. And but snake's tympanum is absent. You can't see tympanum for snakes. Sinus venous is underdeveloped, but truncus arteriosus is absent for this. And RBC is oval and nucleated. We have a bony endoskeleton. But for amphibians, you can see endoskeleton is bony, but cranium is cartilage. And we have the skull is monocondylic. Fishes and reptiles will be having monocondylic skull. And again, for amphibians, you can see the dicondylic skull. And well-developed sternum will be there. And we have the uh, tailbone, we call, we call it as chevron. And one pair of uh, metanephric kidneys are there. Because kidneys are developed from here, metanephric. But uh, you can see for amphibians, that is mesonephric kidney. For fishes and amphibians, it is mesonephric kidney. And these are the members of uricotelic for conversation of water, conservation of water. And brain will be having 12 pairs of uh, cranial nerves. Even for amphibians also, it is 12 pairs. Amphibians, you have only 10 pairs of cranial nerves. Reptiles will be having 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Amphibians, uh, it is 10. And reptiles, it is 12. And on the roof of buccal cavity, you will be having uh, Jacobson's organ. Which is for all faction. And you have the single cloacal, and these are organisms are unisexual. And fertilization is internal. And one or two penis will be there and found in male. You can find the capillary organ for male. But in frogs, the male capillary organs are absent, mostly oviparous. Some are viviparous also will be seen, uh, but you can see large amount of yolk. So that's why we call it as uh, mega lesithal, which is mesolestal is seen for amphibians. And we have telolestal as well, which is uh, the yolk is being towards one side. And the eggs are cladoic, leathery eggs are present. You can see cladoic eggs. And let's see the examples. Chilon, where you can see the cloacal respiration. Turtle. And testudo. Tortoise. And chameleon. Chameleon. Chameleon, it is tree lizard. And calotis, which is a garden lizard. Crocodilus, which 
this crocodile and you have alligator which is alligator again hemidactylus hemidactylus which is wall lizard coming to the poisonous snakes which is uh, nasa nasa cobra which you can find the tota name and uh, we have uh, bangaras which is crate and nasa nasa is cobra and viper Russell viper, which is poisonous. Viper, which is also vipera, which is viper, which is poisonous. And these three are poisonous snakes. Python, anaconda. These are non-poisonous snakes. Okay, these are the some of the examples of reptilia. And this is the complete video about reptilia and mammals. Let's see how the questions will be uh, answered for reptilia and amphibians in the coming video. Thank you very much. And don't forget to post your doubts and subscribe to the channel for more neat videos. Thank you.